Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Jonathan Keeling. I'm INN's Chief Network Officer, and I'm here today with a couple of friends from the Accountability Project. Uh, Jacob Fenton, who's going to be our lead presenter today, and Jennifer LaFleur, who's here to, uh, again, she was with us a couple weeks ago and did sort of an initial presentation. She's going to be here to help us answer some questions and just bring her delightful self uh, to this presentation. Um, I'm really excited for this webinar today because it's kind of the continuation of a conversation that we've started about how INN members can use this incredibly rich data that the Accountability Project has. Um, only this time we're gonna dig kind of deeper um, on some of the more complex things you can do. Um, last time we actually had about 25 people sign up for um, the Accountability Project um, based on that webinar. Um, and so we'll follow up with information after this um, webinar to help you get signed up if you maybe missed that first presentation and are interested in that. Um, we are recording this webinar. If you have questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Jennifer and I will try and keep an eye on those. Jennifer may be able to answer them directly or feed them to Jacob. If not, we'll make sure there's time at the end for questions as well. Um, but otherwise, you know, I hope you will learn a lot. I hope you'll participate. And I'm very excited to toss this over to Jacob Fenton, who's a talented um, developer coder with uh, the Accountability Project. And I'm excited for him to share his wisdom and knowledge with all of you. So Jacob, over to you. All right. Um, so I am sharing my screen. Is that that's all coming through? All right. All right. I'm just going to assume it is. Um, so uh, let's get started. Um, uh, so before I, I kind of get into this, uh, let me just say the obvious. This is, again, Project Investigative Reporting Workshop. Uh, Jen LaFleur is, is running the show. Uh, you know, my name's Jacob Fenton. I've worked as a reporter and an editor and a car specialist. Uh, I've done a lot with campaign finance and nonprofit records. Um, you know, the, the sign up uh, web, web page for this had a link to this sort of uh, account creation link. Um, which uh, is super handy. Otherwise, it, you, you can sort of put yourself on a list and then we have to add you, but if you use the special link, uh, you just automatically create an account. An account is only required to view um, voting records and property records. Uh, those are public records, but because they're a little bit more intrusive, we're trying to not upset people too much. Uh, there's a lot of ground to cover. We're gonna talk about backgrounding, uh, properties, addresses, campaign finance, COVID, nursing homes, plane tracking, uh, paycheck protection, uh, nonprofits, and, and some experiments with data set, this awesome new technology that Simon Willison, one of the co-founders of Django, and one of my heroes, uh, has been developing. Finally, um, if you want, uh, the problem with Zoom is you guys can't click on these links, uh, and it's hiding this, isn't it? Um, uh, uh, how do I make this go away? Um, all right. Jacob, if we can follow yeah. up with those links in an email with the recording okay. to everyone okay. who's here, just to make that simple. Okay, I, and I was just gonna say, so, so there is a link to this document as a PDF, errors and all, um, but it's at dig underscore in, bit.ly dig in, if you're the kind of person who's like, I need to follow this. Um, we're, we'll follow up later, so. Uh, all right, so the idea here is, is pretty simple. We're collecting uh, US public records uh, and, and we're just trying to make them searchable by, by individual name, company name, and address, um, uh, you know, we have lots of different kinds of data. And so the, the main challenge for us is like, how do we make it all fit in the same sort of shape? Uh, and so we've done some violence to it, uh, but I'll try to explain how we've handled it. Uh, you know, and the common thread here is, is accountability. Um, pretty much as you guys define it as well. If, if you guys work uh, or think it's accountability, it probably is. Um, you know, we're really em emphasizing sort of findability. Um, you know, we're trying to make data available from all these sort of different siloed data databases. Um, and, and, you know, the trade-off here is that we're, we're not a specialist site. So, uh, you know, uh, the, the, there's instances where it's, it's more useful to, to look at a specialist site, uh, but, but often we're the way to sort of determine where the records are uh, before you, you report that out further. Um, again, we're, we're starting to do some data sets, which, which uh, data set with, with an extra T uh, that allow you to, to run some SQL queries directly against uh, some of our databases, and I'll, I'll show you about that. Um, okay, so let me, I'm going to click over to the site. This is often where I kind of like lose track of myself and what page I'm on and this and that. So I'm just going to click on this and it's going to open up a new tab in Firefox. Just, sorry, I'll just start at the home page because I think that's sort of useful. Um, we, we're tracking how many records we're up to right now. There's sort of basic um, uh, uh, information here. Um, you know, I, I use the nav to get everything. So, so just to get kind of situated, um, you know, this is the kind of data we've got. There's a lot of data sets. You can jump to them. You can do this. Um, 
uh, you know, if, if you work in a particular area, it's often useful just to be like, hey, what do you got? Um, you know, I think knowing what data is available is often helpful, right? So in Oregon, we've got voter registration if we're logged in, right? Uh, there's active businesses, campaign contributions. We've got parcels for, for the state capital, but not the rest of the state. There's like state salaries. Um, you could sort of spend a lot more, lot more time kind of, um, kind of looking at uh, what we got. Um, right, and, and I should just stress, right, like uh, we're, we're, we're downstream of state law. We don't really have as much California data as we'd like because of, of the public records laws. Um, and, and finally, um, you know, uh, we do kind of try to track what we've just added um, on this uh, new data tab, which uh, you will recognize as a change log if you're a dork like me. Um, you know, so you can see that we just added this flight tracking stuff that I'm like super jazzed about and, and we'll explain. Uh, Shortly, that's not the one I'm trying to get to. Bum, bum, bum. <clears throat> All right, and just generally speaking, uh, right, I mean, we have a ton of campaign finance data, which I'll talk a little bit more about, uh, a lot of government spending. Uh, we've got, I think, 95 million voter records, which is, uh, I think, about half the states. It's about the max of what we can get uh, under, under state law. Um, so, you know, I think backgrounding is, is sort of the, the most useful place to start. Um, uh, you know, and when I say background, really, I just mean, look, when I, when I was a reporter, if I wrote about someone, I ran their name through the voter in the, the parcel database because, you know, you just find stuff that way. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, uh, it, 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 there's, there's some, some beats where that's not as helpful, but um, the ones that I was on, it was. Um, and, you know, I'm going to do something sort of funny here and just kind of point out our weaknesses. Uh, I, most of this talk is going to be about how great we are, but I want to point out uh, th some things that, 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 that we are weak on and, and you know, to, to be aware of. So, we're not that great about business records. And in part, I think open corporates is really great about this. Um, they make you pay for addresses. We're not quite prepared to do that. Um, you know, lobbying data is pretty weirdly shaped. Uh, and I, I recommend a ProPublica tool for that. Uh, and finally, criminal records, it's not quite our jam so far. Um, there's a whole body of law about record retention that we haven't um, gone down that rabbit hole for. All right. So, the, the, before I show you the page, I'm just going to say we have this really simple transaction model of data. And what I mean is that, you know, we think about all these records we ingest as having, having a to and a from. Sometimes it's not really a to or a from, but it's easiest to think of it that way. Um, and, uh, you know, most of our records, it's like, like a campaign finance transaction. It starts with someone, goes to someone. Uh, I think this is going to make a little bit more sense if I just show you. So we'll start um, the simple search. Uh, this is Mark Kazowitz, um, who's uh, one of the awesome characters of the Trump administration. Um, let me just sort of tell you what this page is. This is a name search. Um, and so, so it's not really a name search. We could search by name or by address or by both. Um, but it, it searches all of our collections at once. And so what you can see is that um, there's kind of this handy summary. Most of the hits are, are money and politics. There's also some properties and some nonprofits. Um, you know, most of the hits are coming from New York, but we could zoom into like Florida, Virginia. Um, you know, I'm not quite sure all of these are the same Mark Hazards that I'm interested in, uh, but, but the research process, we, 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 could, we could do that. Um, you know, and I want to, I, I mentioned that this is sort of a transactional, uh, we have a transaction uh, model of data. What we're seeing here are individual parties to the transaction, right? So this is a campaign contribution, but it's just saying that here's a campaign contribution from, from Mark Kazowitz. Um, I should point out too how we think about this. You know, here's Mark Kazowitz at 1160 Park Avenue. Here he is at 1160. There's a really subtle difference in that. I think he's in one field uh, as opposed to another field, but um, we are very picky about, about standardizing records. So uh, what we get on this name search really is sort of an index. It's sort of saying, all right, look, you can find 14 hits for Mark Kazowitz at this address in, in New York campaign contributions, right? And so if I were to click through this, um, I'm now on this data set search page. And what, what, while the name search was a search of all parties to all transactions, the data set search page is a, a search of, of sort of the complete transaction for just a given data set. Now we could pick other data sets, we have a lot, um, but this is just, show, we, we, we only show one at a time, uh, and this is near our campaign contributions, and we can see pretty clearly, right, here's the from, here's the to. Um, there's al we almost always have more fields available from the source data than are available in, in the UI, and, and we just sort of standardize uh, what's available. But if I were just hit download, um, this is like max. Is, I, I can't afford Excel here, guys. Um, but you'll see that there's a lot more, a lot more details. Um, one thing I'd point out is that you know sometimes uh, our, our the, when we clean data, we will add the, the notation clean, um, uh, just just to kind of uh, clue you in that we've we've made slight alterations. 
Um, and finally, you know, whenever you're on a data set page, often, right, I mean, if you're going to use the data, you got to research a little bit. Um, we have more information uh, if you click through here, and, you know, it's got basic information, sort of says uh, it's sort of out of date. Um, uh, but, but this is sort of where the data came from, um, and there's sort of lengthier explanations. Um, you know, I, let's, let's not go, go there right now, um, but uh, it's the kind of information that, that, that should help you kind of make sense um, of, of the data. Um, where I'm like losing track of windows here, guys, sorry. Okay, um, so going back to uh, Mr. Kazowitz, um, the other piece of this is that, um, you know, when I click through here, I got exactly the records uh, from, from the summary page, but often you don't really want exactly, I just really want all these Mark Kazowitz records, right? And so um, if, if you look, uh, I, I now get, I, I think I have 14 records, there's a slightly more records if I just use search for the name you know, I'm not quite sure this is all exactly the same guy I want, um, but uh, most of it is, and you'll notice, I mean, here is Mark E. Kazowitz, here's Mark Kazowitz. The common thread here is uh, his biggest donations are to Cyrus Vance, the Manhattan District Attorney currently um, uh, investigating the president. Um, so let me switch back to the, um, <clears throat> um, yeah, I think this is, I've, I'm just sort of, uh, I've, I've gotten ahead of myself. So again, but, but search is very persnickety. You can use, um, uh, you know, uh, quotation marks to, to, to drill down on more specific things, but I think you'll, you'll just kind of see this as we go. Um, the, other, the other piece of this uh, that, that I'm pretty happy about is, is that we've done a lot more work with addresses, um, and, and, and I think historically in campaign finance stuff that I've worked on, this has been pretty important. Um, so I'm going to just start with a particular address that I noticed something about as an example. So um, I'm, this is now a name search. So this is like everything we've got on 13787 Holly Street, Northwest Andover, Minnesota. Um, and, and just to be clear, it's pretty much all property. This is all coming from property records. Um, I'm gonna click on one of them. Um, and uh, again, same sort of thing. This is just this one record for Rennie and Sylvester, but I really want all of the addresses at this property. Uh, and there's two. Uh, this is slightly confusing. Um, you remember I said there was a to and a from? Well, for properties, there's, you've got a site address and a mailing address. And the reason is that those can be different, uh, obviously, if you're, if you're a landlord. This is confusing because uh, this house is the mailing address for this, this person, Rennie Sylvester, but it appears that they own a different piece of property. So it seems like they own this property, but they live here. Meanwhile, the owner of this property is this entity, 201521 borrower LP. Um, like, what the heck is that, right? Um, so, um, yeah, it's a real, there's a link to it. This is just a normal house. Um, <coughs> oh, ah, I didn't need to go forward. Um, so, uh, you know, what happens instead if we search for, for that entity, right? I'm just going to click through so I don't make, I, 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 right, so, so I don't screw up typing. Um, and, like, there's kind of a lot more uh, results for, for this. Um, uh, so, we're now in the name search. Um, and so we're, 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 this is across all collections, right? But we're, we're getting just properties. That's all they really do. Uh, we're say, like, like Florida, Minnesota, uh, Texas, right? Um, I can sort of drill down to Minnesota, um, et cetera. And again, this is the name search. So, so this is like a summary of records. It looks like actually these are all unique. Um, but um, so, so, you know, we, we got more by searching for the name of this like kind of uh, crazy entity. Um, but, but, uh, some ways. Um, if we were to go back to, I think, is it Florida? Um, um, sorry, guys, I'm losing the train here. Um, <clears throat> all right, so, sorry, uh, here we go. So, Going back, th th this is the record I wanted to highlight, right? So this is a search for this entity, and, and this is coming from Florida. There's 40 hits for this, which means that this shows up in 40 different uh, records. And, and really, it's because they're the owner of 40 different um, entities with this precise combination of, of uh, uh, address and name. But here's the important thing. It's care of invitation homes. Um, so um, uh, who's invitation homes? Um, so uh, if you're interested in this, go, you, should, you should read Aaron Glantz's uh, book, Home Records, or the, the uh, Center for Investigative Reporting reveal piece about it. Uh, really fascinating uh, uh, entity. A lot of folks in the Trump administration, I think, were involved. Um, uh, that essentially in, in buying up uh, foreclosed properties uh, at the financial crisis, um, it upset Invitations Home so much that there's a website they have like solely 
uh, devoted to debunking Aaron Glantz's book. Uh, like, that's how you know you've arrived, guys. Um, uh, sorry, window. <clears throat> um, so, all right. So, you know, we looked uh, for this entity in the Twin Cities, but, you know, again, let's, let's go sort of even farther. Um, I'm going to just enter their address. Um, actually, let me, let, me, let me just make this. I'm going to show you the results for this. Um, this is search, a search for this entity. And there's kind of a funny thing. The mailing address is saying Dallas, Minnesota. I don't think I screwed that up. I think that uh, this is a common thing you see in property records. They just assume it's in-state. This is really Dallas, Texas. So I'm just saying that to justify uh, searching for their name, but I'm leaving the state out, right? So I'm not searching for Texas or Minnesota. Um, and, and actually, I get way, way more, right? So this is, again, just Twin Cities property. So this is a data set search showing all, all these uh, rows in the Twin City property database that, that we've got in here. 434, in fact. Um, and, you know, if you look, remember, I had searched before, I think I was looking for this entity, uh, but there's actually like a whole bunch, right? Invitation Homes just has lots of, lots of names. Um, and the thing that I'd stress is that, uh, you know, it's just a quick download uh, just to kind of look at all these, right? Um, and, um, you know, I have to say, I do a lot more work in, in Excel and spreadsheet programs that I do uh, uh, on the web. So it's super handy to have this. And, and this is, these are like great, you know, uh, standardized records, uh, pretty, pretty well uh, broken out. Um, I think the thing that I wanted to point out um, is that you can kind of tell a lot about how these guys operate, right? Um, the, the sale date I find really interesting um, and the sale value, right? Um, the, there's a pretty tight clustering. The sale value is pretty small range. And, and the sale date is 2013, 2014, right? I mean, it seems like these guys bought up a ton of properties and haven't done, haven't been buying nearly as much since then. Um, said something about their valuation model. Um, uh, you know, one of the things that this makes me wonder about uh, really is like what's happened since then. Oh man. Um, ah, window. Oh my gosh, guys. Um, it, what, what's happened to these properties since then, right? I, I, this is not a, a work that I've done at all, um, but with that spreadsheet of these 434 uh, homes, uh, we could probably figure something out about whether they're appreciating and how that how they're appreciating comparable to their to their neighbors. Um, you know. Um, all right, that's it for property records for now. Um, I mentioned I've done a lot of work for with FEC data, um, and and in particular uh, at the Sunlight Foundation, the 2014 campaign uh, cycle. Um, uh, something kind of crazy has happened with FEC data um, lately. The number of rows has gotten out of control, right? We have something like 600 million campaign finance rows and, and lots and lots of them are FEC. Um, uh, here's why. The, the official download uh, for most FEC data leaves out the street address. Um, and, uh, you know, I think most folks who are doing traditional campaign finance work don't really care about that so much. Uh, it's not as important. But, you know, we're not really using this as a campaign finance site. And, and what I mean by that is that, like, I've written campaign finance sites, you know, and, and I think that summing things up and making totals is a really important part of, of what doing campaign finance, but we're, we're more focused on findability. Um, so the reason the number of records has exploded at the, at, at the FEC uh, is, is this funny thing called pass-through packs. Um, Act Blue is one, Win Red is another. Um, and something funny happens with them. Um, you know, I could give a buck uh, to, to uh, Steve Stockman, uh, the guy to the right, uh, and, and, you know, he, he would not have to disclose that as a federal candidate uh, because it's under this disclosure threshold. But if I give it through Act Blue or Win Red, they do have to disclose it. Uh, it's part of part of the, the agreement that lets them exist. Um, and uh, Act Blue and Win Red have really kind of taken over fundraising uh, in recent years. And so there's just way more records of people giving like a dollar, two dollars. And it's not incredibly useful for campaign finance, but it is useful um, for finding stuff. Um, you know, and so I, the one thing I'm going to say is that there's instances where we have all these records from Act Blue that are a little bit kind of hard to make sense of because, you know, the pass through money from Act Blue is recorded, whereas the recipient doesn't record them. Uh, let's not go too far down this rabbit hole because it gets complicated. But um, if we start thinking about, about campaign finance as a way to find people uh, or to find stuff about them, there's a lot more in there. All right. So <clears throat> the other piece of this is that you know, for a long time, um, you didn't see small dollar donations in this way. And again, this is just kind of an offshoot of this pass-through pack thing. Um, but I'm not sure it's really filtered through uh, to folks that, that these uh, donations are visible. Um, so here's, here's a guy I just happened to be looking at. Um, Jonathan Cantor, uh, you know, I think um, he's, he's listed on the DHS website as if he is the acting chief privacy officer. Um, I would just point out, actually, he left the government in May. Um, and, and hasn't worked there since then. 
Uh, he's a guy who you know, had a long career in government. He started as a staff attorney at the Social Security Administration in 1998 and has been continuously employed by different government agencies ever since then. Um, and I noticed that, that, again, this is someone else's sketchy property site, but, you know, I mean, he, he owns property at 101, or there's a Jonathan R. Cantor, which is the same middle name if you go through his bio, uh, at 101 Snowy Owl Drive in Silver Spring. Um, you know, I was, I was looking for Jonathan Cantor just like that. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, he says he's an attorney uh, uh, for the government, right? I mean, this is employer is the U.S. government. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the same guy. You know, if I was reporting on this, I might say more. Um, and here's why I mentioned this. I, it's totally unremarkable that some government guy gave like 50 bucks in contributions. Um, what's interesting is he gave through Act Blue. So, I mean, he's a member of the Trump administration giving to Democrats. Um, uh, which again, again, totally legit. Um, but but this kind of thing I think is useful for for just digging up information about people, um, especially kind of like back like yeah, sort of uh, um, st stuff that that's 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 helpful in finding folks who uh, have left government and maybe maybe aren't aren't necessarily uh, sympathetic to some of their aims. Um, well, we can talk more about well, why I'm interested in this guy. Um, uh, oh, and, and that's right. And sorry, if you really want to, so this is another in indication of. Um, how it's a little confusing. So it says it's to act blue. I just want to do the download so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, Cause this is another instance where, uh, right. And we've got all these original fields. Um, uh, this, uh, these act blue things, uh, there's a memo text description. And so like we can see that this one is earmarked for the DCCC. This is earmarked for Heidi for Senate, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a little bit annoying that you have to download to get to that, but it's just, that's, that's sort of the reality of these. Um, uh, of these these Act Blue uh, contributions. Oh man, how do I get back to the? Sorry guys, this dance of getting back to the presentation. Okay, so um, I, I, I said I wouldn't recycle stuff, but I, I, this is this is I'm so fascinated by this one. Um, so uh, you know, one of one of one of my other favorite um, uh, sites for digging up stuff is uh, ProPublica's. Uh, what is it, prescriber checkup, I think they call it. Um, you know, so uh, this is, these are the top prescribers of oxycodone in Oregon. Um, you know, I, if you guys know anything about the geography of Oregon, by the way, um, these are all not large places. You gotta scroll all the way down so you get to Portland where most people live. Um, there's a lot, Medford, Grants Pass, these are tiny, tiny little places. Um, also, uh, I, I don't know the story of this, uh, right? Physician's assistant, physician's assistant, physician's assistant, um, kind of interesting pattern. Uh, that that got me uh, sort of interested. Um, so um, uh, the thing that kind of struck me was that you know if you go to their website, which I don't know if I have it linked, right? It's linked here, but um, you know she's listed as Lori Hubner, um, and uh, you know I, I started sort of getting interested in, in who was there. So this is a search. This is a, a uh, this is oh, all right. So this is a name search, uh, of, but but we're only seeing the results of voters. Um, so this is her voter registration. Uh, probably makes sense that right. We can sort of click through to this, uh, right? Mary F. Hubner, Mary Freerix Hubner, seventy eight hundred Griffin Creek Road, Medford. It's even got a birth date, which I think is useful. Um, that looks to be about about the right age, um, uh, right? Also, uh, another fascinating piece is that um, uh, you know I, I can see all of her her for Act Blue contributions, right? I mean, this is she has a pretty pretty regular. Um, giving cycle and, and right, this is her physician assistant, uh, this Mary Hubner person, right? And again, like Lori Hubner's on the website, Mary Hubner uh, uh, listed here. Um, let's go back. Um, and and the, other, the other thing that I, need, I, I really should mention too is um, the, other, the other database we have that's, that's super useful is something called the National Provider Inventory. We've, so, we've, we've abbreviated it NPI. Um, so I, I'm just gonna kill out, let me just kill out that um, and, um, I think we see eight results. If we were to just, so that's actually her, right? 2925 Siskiyou Boulevard. Um, there, there's more information here um, about like doctors and nurses and whatnot. Um, let's, let's, right, in fact, there's even telephone numbers and whatnot. Um, I, I, we don't really need to worry about, about the specifics of it too much um, right now. Um, but again, I mean, there's this thing of, of <laughs> I mean, there's this Mary Hubner and Laurie Hubner. Um, so, so like, uh, so if we do run the same search against, what is it, uh, federal campaign, um, U.S. campaign finance, um, uh, where we just say Hubner, 
Medford. Uh, we got a slightly different set of results. Um, wait. All right. Um, I'm going to sort them, sort them by date um, and just sort of scroll through them. And, you know, she's, I, I'm not that really interested in who she's giving to. Uh, she's actually sort of giving maybe more than I thought. Um, but something interesting happens here. Um, you'll notice that Lori Hubner at Touchstone Pain and Mary Hubner at Touchstone Pain seem to be the same person. I, you know, I mean, if I was going to report this, I would probably want to know more. But if you look, look, uh, I mean, they're both physician's assistant who have the same address and the same cycle of giving. I mean, here it is. Uh, Lori Hubner and Mary Hubner give, give on the same days even. Uh, I think here's another instance of it. Um, uh, now, so you might say, like, who cares, really? Um, uh, you know, I, I, I think that I, oh, man, I went back to her wedding announcement. She was married in 1984. Um, you know, she's Lori when she lived in Alaska. Um, so why would we care? Well, so it turns out after I spent some time on this and, and uh, you know, uh, FOIA the medical rec, FOIA'd her medical records. Um, so sure enough, her license was suspended for substance abuse, which again, I mean, happens to folks. Um, you know, another thing that really jumped out to me. Okay, all right. So this is Jacob and I'm just gonna kind of continue talking. Um, it's pretty normal for people to stop paying attention to me for a few minutes anyway. So uh, <laughs> uh, this is this is not, not unusual in the least. Um, so I was, I was, uh, going on and on about, uh, about this person, uh, Mary Hubner, who turns out to be Lori Hubner. Um, and uh, the reason I'm, I'm really fascinated is that Mary Hubner has had some, some substance abuse issues, and that's the name that her medical licenses are under. Uh, so I, I think it is, it is sort of fascinating that, that you know, all of her, she, she's referred to as Lori uh, on all, sort of, all of their uh, sort of promotional stuff. Um, but, uh, and, and, and again, with the original um, uh, ProPublica uh, uh, data um, on top, what is this, oxycodone prescribers. There's this other guy, Jared Thomas, um, who, who also seems to be working out of uh, Touchstone Pain, even though he doesn't appear on their website, which is a bit odd. And I was going to, um, are we on the national provider inventory? Let's just go back to NPI. Um, and uh, if our, <laughs> Mark Hazards is definitely not a doctor. Uh, uh, if I were to, what am I looking for? Jared Lee Thomas. Um, uh, I mean, here he is at the same, same address. He's not listed on their website, but, uh, you know, so, so uh, two physician's assistants who are kind of like top prescribers of oxycodone um, at the same clinic. Um, uh, and, and, you know, the thing about being a physician's assistant is you have to be supervised by a doctor, a medical doctor. Um, and the person who's doing that is this guy, Sean Sill. Um, so like, let's just kind of look at Sean Sill. Um, Right, I mean, we can see here he is uh, in the National Provider Identification File at this address, uh, right? At the and, and so he's given uh, what state campaign contributions. Um, he's he's an active Oregon business. Um, he actually has kind of a lot of active businesses, right? Touchstone is his main one, but Pain Relief Institute, Medical Services, Rogue Valley it's Interventional, right? Sort of a lot of stuff going on there. Um, uh, so, uh, <clears throat> long story short. He's also a doctor who's been to rehab twice, um, you know, and, and like this stuff happens to people. I don't want this to, I mean, you know, it's, it's not an easy thing. Um, but, uh, you know, what's interesting is if you go back to some of the older stories, there's just kind of a lot more, it, it, it's not, it's not, I wouldn't call this exactly just uh, drug abuse. I, I've been suspicious of the Oregon Medical Board for a while. And, you know, I mean, there's even more sort of wilder details I'm not going to post here, but, um, what uh, the board also found violated professional boundaries in treating employee he was infatuated with that pain specialists of su giving giving medication a special cup of tea, uh, which I believe was opiates. I think he was essentially feeding a woman he was obsessed, uh, infatuated with opiates. So I, you know, again, uh, there are limits to what we can accomplish with a database. Uh, you know, I, I think that that uh, these are real problems that real people have, and 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 still has been open about his struggles and some of the news reporting. But it's it's a pretty fascinating thing, uh, and and frankly, I think that. Uh, if you start looking at folks who, who show up on, on, on ProPublica's top prescribers, uh, you get places that are interesting. So, um, all right, I want to I wanna move on to uh, sort of uh, COVID stuff and, and nursing homes. Uh, this, this is also part of the national provider inventory uh, or, or the medical professionals involved are. Um, you know, I was noticing our, our logo is from pre-COVID times, although it is maybe more evocative than, than I'd realized. Um, so, um, here, here's kind of uh, one of the use cases I wanted to start with. Uh, so in Oregon, uh, we are lucky enough to get disclosure of nursing home outbreaks. I know not every state does that. Um, you know, we're no longer at the point where a single nursing home outbreak is news. Um, 
whoops, 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 um, where, where it's news. I've just cut and paste, uh, whoops, one of the weekly reports. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm, I, I just picked one here, Creekside Rehab, right? The outbreak started, I think, this week um, or, or last. Um, so I, I checked Creek, Creek, Creekside Rehab doesn't work, but um, Creekside Rehabilitation does. Um, and uh, let me just kind of point out a few records. So this is, right, this is a name search. So we're searching all of our, our data sets uh, for Creekside Rehabilitation um, in Oregon, right? So I've restricted Oregon. Um, so, uh, right, actually, this is kind of interesting. Um, this is CARES Act Provider Relief Fund. Um, so I don't know if you guys remember, but, but this is part of the COVID uh, money that's essentially directed at um, uh, medical providers, in part because they're they're uh, you know uh, all, uh, they're really hurt by all the all the patients who have totally stopped coming. I wonder if my it, is my internet really not doing that. That's fun. Um, so this is just going to be one of those days. That's just yeah. how it's going to be. <laughs> you know, I'm just just all right. So anyway, um, so so uh, right uh, and and this is uh, COVID money. Uh, so th this is something on the order of what. Three hundred and forty, three hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars that they've received. Uh, so that's that's one record. Um, so uh, uh, they're listed as we, we can find out about the Oregon ownership. Um, more about sort of nursing home beds and locations. I just kind of want to pop this one open real quick. Um, uh, we did a bunch of work early on about this, so I, we see that there's forty one beds. Um, I think that we can find out more about this. It comes directly from CMS. And again, if we just download kind of more more, we download the whole record. Uh, we get we get more records. Um, you know, I mean, average residents per day, thirty six point eight. Um, you know, just a lot of, a lot of other stuff that I think come could, might might come in handy. Um, uh, uh, and and uh, th but th this is maybe the most important one. So um, we we've, we've uh, uploaded the nursing home infection control deficiencies database from CMS. Um, and uh, uh, again, you know. It, it's best to just download the whole thing where right? it says provide and implement infection prevention control program. So essentially that's a thing that they were maybe not doing in 2019. Um, I wanna download this again to see more. Um, I'm just gonna, I, I, I've done a teensy bit of work with this stuff and I can tell you uh, right away, um, right? So it, it, it says, right? So it says provide and implement infection control. Uh, I think the thing I'm looking for is scope, um, right? So uh, when it says, and it's, it's deficient, provider has data of correction but the scope is J. It, it doesn't really, it's not totally apparent. I think that scope is the thing that, that matters. Um, but to research that, I'm just gonna kind of pop open our, our, uh, the details about this, um, right? And so we got, we got some stuff, but uh, we added, I think a note about the scope, right? If data presented as one deficiency per row for more on what scope severity means, see page five here, um, right? Great government document. Um, and let's see, all right. Um, this is the scope of nursing home deficiencies, right? So essentially, um, this is the most serious, right? This is not as serious. Um, what, what are we at, J? I think J, J is kind of getting up there. It, it could be worse. Um, but, uh, you know, I just want to point out, like, <laughs> I just looked for a place where there was a, a COVID outbreak and, uh, you know, it, they immediately found a, a, a place that has, uh, you know, a relatively severe uh, issue with infection control. And, 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 I mean, this is not anything new. Um, but but certainly is a thing that I think uh, is is relevant. Um, the other, the other thing I'd point out is that right. So so we actually have uh, both the state and the federal records added. At state in Oregon, we don't have every state. Um, but but right, there's also um, uh, uh, <clears throat> um, like just ownership, uh, which I think is is useful in reporting this sort of stuff out. Um, let me just cut back to my presentation to see how far I've deviated from what I'm supposed to be saying here. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty good. Um, I guess the other piece that I would say is, here, let's just go back. Um, you know, so we haven't done much with, with addresses, right? But this is 812 Southeast 48th. Um, if I just pop this up and do like another name search with just this address, um, sometimes we get sort of slightly different. Oh, you know what? I think I probably, uh, oh, it's because I have it. It's not a name, it's an address. And right, actually, so we even get some of their. This is them working as a contractor, or their affiliate working as a contractor. Um, I did get better at this. Um, so I think if we the the, the uh, here, you know, if we go to the name search and go to NPI healthcare providers, do we? 
All right. Sorry, my, my links are busted. Um, here, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go on. Uh, so we we have tons of medical medical records and whatnot. Um, so uh, let me sort of do like a COVID intermission here. Um, so uh, uh, the way that we searched was sort of useful, but it but wasn't ideal, right? So I mean, we were able to to knowing the name of a nursing home that we were interested in, we were able to just kind of get records about it. But sometimes that's not really the way that you want to do this. Um, so um, we have started making some of our data sets available by, uh, by, by this, this technology I mentioned earlier, data set that lets you query uh, by, um, by SQL. And, and we're doing exactly what you shouldn't be doing here, which is that we're, we're <laughs> effectively launching uh, a page uh, right now. Um, this is our, our little page about data sets. Um, and uh, we, we really have links to the two different flavors of it. One requires you to be logged in and one does not. Um, so I'm just gonna click on this. This is our more stripped down version of it. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about data set uh, right here, um, but uh, what is super awesome um, is that uh, the URL, and so this is this crazy cl Google Cloud Run thing, but, but the URL just includes raw SQL. Um, if you guys have done any web development, that's like the, exactly what you're not supposed to do. This is how SQL injection happens, but because of how it's set up, which is brilliant, it, it's not a problem at all. Um, so there's sort of a home view that kind of like lists these tables and there's kind of like a table view um, that has uh, a, like a particular table. Um, and I just want to point out, I have all these zip codes in here and, and zip codes and CBSAs. And like, uh, this, is, this is one of those things where, you know, I'm often interested in, in a metro area, but the, there's no metro area given. So I just kind of have added a crosswalk to this so that we can, we can do something uh, more useful. Um, Right, and so like, <clears throat> um, right, I'm just selecting all, sorry, that was sort of, sort of silly. Um, all right, so um, uh, in order to start like digging up stuff about a particular area, we kind of have to do some sort of, uh, some, some SQL, right? I, I won't explain SQL. This is SQLite flavored SQL, um, if you wanna, if you want right? But so I've just said select all from zips, right? So essentially I'm saying the CBSA title is Portland. So here's some Portland zip codes in, in the censuses. Uh, Portland CBSA, um, right? So we can kind of put this stuff together a little bit more. And this is like, you know, got a subquery, it's a little gnarly, um, but essentially, right? So, and, and I happen to know NH infection infection. So we're saying select all the rows um, uh, from NH infection um, where the zip uh, is in Portland and we're gonna order by the scope uh, descending. Um, and, and so, um, you know, I mean, where the scope? yeah. So, so there is someone with a K. <laughs> Um, I, I don't know if there's an outbreak there, but, but I think that this is sort of a much more useful way of, of viewing this kind of thing. Um, the, the awesome thing about this is we could just download this as a CSV file, right? No, I mean, we could have done that from, from our site too, but like this is now, right? Once, I, I think it's much more powerful once we start querying the data rather than just um, searching it. Um, all right, so uh, uh, a little bit more COVID stuff. Um, uh, I think one of the early questions um, was uh, how full are the hospitals going to be? Um, we've obviously seen some some issues in New York and and, and other places as this has gone. Um, uh, so one of the other things that we're blessed with in Oregon is this like weekly report that that includes the number of patients per hospital. It, it, they do it in this funny way where it's like the maximum of suspected. Anyway, like crazy state stuff. Um, uh, so the question is, uh, is this a lot of people at Salem Health Hospital? Um, also, it's not called Salem Health Hospital, it's Salem Hospital. So I'm gonna search for that. Um, and so I'm, this is now a data set search, meaning that we are just searching one data set and that data set is called Hospital Beds and Locations. Um, and look, there's 421 subtotal acute beds. Um, I'm just gonna download this because this is an exceptionally wide uh, file that has a lot more stuff. And, and a lot, of, it's actually kind of hard to make sense of. Acute beds, 0700, all this, all this other junk. Um, I mean, the, the short answer is that there's 400, it's a 421 bed uh, hospital. Um, and I think there's approximately like 60 uh, adult ICU beds. Um, so, so in short, this hospital is, is in good shape. Um, I mean, I think uh, the other piece of this uh, to keep in mind is something called uh, utilization. Um, so utilization means on an average day, what percentage of beds are full. And so the all adult ICU utilization rate is 87%, which is actually relatively high. Um, uh, so, you, you know, I mean, I, the, the number of available beds I have day to day, I'm not totally clear on. Um, 
this is like a pretty specialized weird data set. And, and because of that, um, whenever I hit this stuff, I, I, I try to go and like read about it because this is clearly kind of weird. So hospital bed counts are tagged from CMS cost reports. Okay, right for more, see here. And like, what do we get? Oh, wait, um, there, there's a lot of document. Oh, did I put, <laughs> whoops. I guess the link is busted. That's funny. All right, anyway, um, what do I want to say? Down. Oh, here. All right. There is a link to this data set documentation um, that, that explains like way, 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 way more than potentially you want to use, but, but it sort of explains the bed utilization, et cetera. Um, again, uh, this is, I think, useful for uh, kind of COVID stuff. Um, all right. Quick change. Plane spotting, right? Uh, so uh, I live in Portland, Oregon. You may have heard uh, the fed, the federal, a bunch of federal agents have been uh, guests of the city for some time. Um, uh, so uh, one of the things that, that, that we've had on here forever has been um, uh, FAA, what is it? FAA aircraft. Um, and you know, there's been a fair amount of reporting about uh, stuff going on. Um, uh, this is an Easter egg, which is really an accident. Uh, it, um, I meant to I'll let you search by N number, but I forgot that the records, uh, uh, they, they omit the N. Um, so right now it's for, um, we're searching for 419K. Um, <clears throat> here's kind of an interesting plane, right? Uh, so, so the N number is really N419K. Uh, and, and again, like I could download, do the whole download thing and find out about, about the airframe and all kinds of other, other stuff. Um, but also uh, we've added these links and this is something I'm sort of proud of uh, to, to this uh, uh, um, uh, website tracking site called ADSB Exchange. If you guys don't know this sort of stuff, uh, generally ADSB Exchange is better to use because uh, than, than most other flight sites because they don't uh, censor uh, flights. Uh, most other flight sites kind of will give folks the option of having their plane not tracked and most of the planes that you want to track are, are usually not tracked. Um, this is actually not really showing us anything because it's, it's for a day that, you know, uh, where there's nothing going on. And frankly, I happen to know <laughs> the action with this plane is, I don't know, was it the 23rd, the 24th? Um, you know, so this is a DHS plane and, you know, we kind of see it doing stuff. It's, it's landing there, it's in Portland. Um, can I just kind of zoom in for a second here? Um, I think, oh, maybe it's the, yeah, the 23rd. So the 23rd, I think is, is really something kind of interesting. If you look, uh, here it is taking off from Bellingham. Um, and there's kind of this awesome feature where you can kind of click on it um, and just make it play uh, 40 times. And it, I happen to know Portland is seven hours behind UTC. So if it's 4 a.m., this is around 9 or 9.30 that shows up here. And so what is this DHS plane doing? Well, not really much. Um, but it's hanging around Portland uh, for hours uh, at what, about um, 10,000 feet just circling. Um, th this plane has been written about. This is, this is not exactly news. Um, but, but I think that uh, this functionality is, is kind of great. Um, so, you know, um, we, one thing I will say is that it's really hard to know which planes to track without knowing which planes are in the sky. And so I deal with this by, I just pay ADSB exchange a few bucks a month. Um, uh, and I have like a super scrimble script that just kind of will, will hit their API and be like, just show me all the planes that are in the sky right now. And so I just ran this every night for, for a few weeks. Um, and starting with the list of planes and I kind of like click through and it's like, what are they up to? Um, you know, uh, the other thing I'd say is that if you're not sure, you can, like, people take pictures of planes, especially uh, interesting ones like this. This is another one that was spotted at the Portland airport, that, not this one. Uh, this is a P-3B, a sub-hunter from the, from the Cold War. Uh, this is a radar dish uh, and a stinger at the back that's intended to help with electromagnetic radiation, or sorry, electromagnetic detection of uh, Russian subs. Uh, this is kind of an aging fleet that's been handed down to CBP. Um, I'm sort of running low on time. I'm going to kind of skip through this, but I guess, you know, I, I think the, the value of, of this stuff is, is in part that you can just sort of go look uh, for in FAA craft for the Portland police, right? Because of course they got their own planes. Um, and then, you know, from there, you just kind of click through and just kind of see what they're up to. Now they weren't really doing much, uh, you know, yesterday, but uh, what, I mean, you can just kind of see uh, they were up to something a few days ago. I think there's a lot of instances, especially of late, where it's, it's useful to, to know uh, that kind of thing. All right. So um, uh, another, another thing that we've been adding recently is uh, Paycheck Protection Program, right? This is another one of the um, COVID uh, measures. Uh, and, and I think it's, I mean, I mean, stuff has been written about this, uh, but uh, you know, you may want to look anyway. Um, I mean, he here's just some of the, the more high profile stuff, right? I mean, I think uh, Foremost Maritime, for instance, is uh, what? Uh, 
um, uh, owned by Elaine Chow's family. She, of course, is a transportation secretary mar married to Mitch McConnell. Um, th so this is a search for, for foremost maritime across uh, sort of all of our stuff. And, and you kind of see, you know, their campaign contribution. Um, but, but I think this is what I was uh, going to point out. Uh, man, oh man, my internet. <coughs> um, so, so anyway, you can tell that indeed uh, they, they got uh, a good chunk of change uh, through the, the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, right, uh, so, so did right, uh, Kevin Hearns uh, Corporation in Oklahoma, right? We could sort of um, filter that down by Oklahoma. Uh, also, uh, Kazowitz, Mark Kazowitz's firm, of course, uh, you know, came in with millions of dollars of bailout money. Um, I would say too, you know, so we have started posting data sets. Simon Willison did a data set of this. Uh, that's, that's frankly great. And so like, we're kind of like, well, why bother, right? Um, uh, so I would say if you're researching this stuff, also go check out his, his link, because um, that's, that's helpful. All right, uh, nonprofits. So uh, I, I said I wouldn't recycle uh, stuff, but, but since the last time I talked about this, the feds keep rating uh, people who we've worked, who we've been helping research. Um, so um, this is, uh, you know, we, we've given out micro grants, uh, or, or at least one so far, um, to, to folks who are doing interesting research that would benefit from our tools, and it, we kind of have helped them with our tools. Um, and, and I think this is one a story that really kind of knocked it out of the park um, by by uh, uh, Kathy Kowalski at Ion Ohio. I kind of helped with some of the, the more dorky research, um, but. Uh, uh, the, the gist of the story uh, is, and it's a little complicated to explain, is all of this dark money uh, that, um, that uh, flowed uh, through a variety of entities, but ultimately ended up uh, in the pockets of uh, Larry Householder, uh, the, the speaker of the Ohio State House who, uh, whose house was raided and, and who resigned recently as a result, uh, essentially, uh, the money, the money came from the nuclear power industry, and and sort of uh, they essentially bought the whole state legislature and convinced them to spend billions of dollars. I mean, this is a great business deal for them. I think they spent maybe maybe tens or hundreds of millions. I think it's tens of millions, uh, but they got a billion dollar bailout. Although the the uh, result of that is is not totally clear. Um, you know, I, I have this under nonprofits because I think that a lot of political money gets gets run this way. Um, this is just like this random odd odd bit from this, and this isn't really what the story was about at all, but I wanted to highlight it here because I think it sort of shows you what happens with nonprofits. So uh, this is this crazy, crazy complicated chart I, I kind of worked on for a bit. Um, and I just want to point out, at some point the money's going backwards, right? Th these are all the people who are donors, but there's this money flowing from this C4 back over here. I can't really explain it. So I got really interested in the Illinois Business and Industry Council, right? So. Um, this is the only, these are all the records we've got on them. Um, so we have them as a donor, right? Um, but th they don't exist uh, in any of our nonprofit records. Um, and, and I should be super clear that our nonprofit records come from electronically filed forms. Uh, we have a lot of records, but, but I, did, I did some more work. And, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the thing that, that sort of jumps out is that these folks essentially don't exist. Uh, and that's kind of a problem. Um, you have to file taxes if you receive this much money, uh, and it seems like they haven't. Um, this is like a tiny. This is a tiny bit of a much larger story, um, but it's the kind of thing again. Like once you start poking at these things, you kind of get the weird stuff. Um, uh, another another great nonprofit uh, bit that I wanted to mention is uh, you know I went to a talk uh, by a Ukrainian member of parliament. Uh, in fact, with Aaron Glantz, who wrote that book. Um, and, and uh, you know, there's this amazing uh, civil case about a uh, Ukrainian oligarch that I'm going to not explain in full detail, but essentially he and his crew are uh, accused of, of uh, essentially laundering upwards of $4 billion um, from, from a bank he ran. He, he, he sort of had like a giant metals empire based in Ukraine. Uh, this is all tied up with, with uh, um, the, the, the Trump stuff, which I'll explain in a moment. Um, but, you know, the civil lawsuit that, that um, was filed by the, the, the uh, now owners of the bank trying to recover their money, uh, mentioned a number of folks in the US. Um, and you know, one of the guys is, was this guy, Mordecai Korf. And after I went to this talk, I just kind of was like, well, what do we have on Mordecai Korf? Um, and you know, so sure enough, I mean, he's, this is, uh, you know, he, there's some, some corporate records. Uh, we've got his voter registration, um, uh, what his, his property assessment, um, I should point out this is million. So that that's that's a seven million dollar property in Miami. Um, uh, uh, where did I go? Where did my results go? Um, uh, 
write campaign contributions. But he also, he's a director and employee, he's a director of the Core Family Foundation and also of the Labor Foundation. And, and uh, like labor is like his, um, I don't wanna say, it's someone else who, who he works with. Um, you know, and I started kind of looking at where the money was going. And the thing that became super clear um, was that uh, some of the entities named in the civil lawsuit were also showing up in the, the uh, nonprofit records. So let me, let me kind of point out to an example of this. So I think I mentioned that, um, you know, uh, we are, but, um, oh, do we need to, sorry. We, uh, we, we are, but one, um, one tool of many, and um, we recommend that you guys use lots of other tools. And if I can get this to load, um, yeah. All right, so <clears throat> he's given out a lot of grants, but I'm just gonna follow this link. And, and I, I set this up so that, that this goes directly to uh, ProPublica's awesome nonprofit explorer. Um, I'm just gonna go back here and just point something out. I started looking into this and, and um, here's an example of the thing that jumped out at me, I think, is it? All right, this is, uh, I should have linked to this guys. Um, uh, let, let, me, let me see if I can just pull one of these. Um, I'm really interested in schedule B. Um, because Schedule B says where the money is coming from. Um, and um, all right, so in this instance, we see that it's $350,000 from uh, Mordecai Korf. Um, maybe it's this one. I should have hard linked this, guys. Um, what what I, I found after many hours of um, uh, staring at this is, is that some of the money wasn't just coming out of Mordecai Korf's pockets, um, but, but was coming directly from some of the uh, entities named in the lawsuit. Um, so it not just not just Mordecai Korf, but Optima International. Um, and, uh, you know, so this is the thing that we, we kind of mentioned to uh, a newspaper called The Forward. They, they're a reformed Jewish uh, publication uh, that, that uh, did great work with this. Um, Mordecai Korf and Yuri Labor are both um, really important members of the Chabad um, Orthodox Jewish community in Florida. Um, and and uh, I think that that the, the forward piece kind of did a, did pretty good work on that. And really, in the last month or two, or the last I think week, uh, their their Miami and uh, Ohio uh, offices have been raided. Um, this is uh, the sort of thing that I think we want to keep an eye on. Um, as you could guess, their lawyer is Mark Kazowitz. Um, I think we're just about hitting the end of uh, our time here. I yeah, have another data out. set. Yeah, uh, why don't we stop here? I have more data sets to like go over and stuff, but. Um, you know, I, I think like, so firstly, I have no idea if anyone's even still there. Yep, after you've our, got uh, a crowd okay. and okay. we'll, we'll be, yeah. we'll be um, taking the two halves. So apologies yeah. to everyone who got kicked yeah. out and thank you for making your way back. Some technical hurdles on INNs in, nothing to do with the accountability project, all uh, blame on us. Uh, Jacob loved that uh, ending slide. It's very 2020. Um, at any rate, if you have a, a pressing question, feel free to put it in. Otherwise, I will follow up with a recording of both halves of the webinar for everyone who registered. And um, I will also include Jacob and Jennifer's email so that if you want to get in touch with them, you can. And then Jacob, maybe you can just send me some of the most um, salient pressing links uh, from so, the... So this what, what I was going to say is that this entire document as a PDF is available at this URL. So if you just go to bit.ly Great. and dig underscore INN, get it, dig in, um, uh, you, you can get this. I mean, please don't like post this around because it's full of errors and probably libelous material, but, um, it, it, but it, it's still maybe a useful reference. Um, I guess the other thing I could just probably just put up our email addresses because again, uh, we are mostly about uh, hey Jacob, yep, I, dro I, I dropped the accountability email into the chat. Great. Um, as well as the link to set up a logon and the link to the site. So you guys have all that. Awesome. So I didn't see any pressing questions come in and we're pretty much right on time. So um, I'm just going to thank Jacob and Jennifer for being here and digging into that. Jacob, I have to tell you, I'm a super airplane nerd. So I love seeing you talk about uh, tracking planes and all that. ADS B exchange is one of my one of my bookmarks on my phone so I can see who's flying over my house. Um, really appreciated all of that and appreciate everyone who rolled with our tech troubles today. Um, and just thank you all for being here. Yep. Thanks so much, guys. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.